Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano located in the Cascade Range of Skamania County, Washington. Compared to other volcanoes of the Cascade Range, Mount St. Helens is much younger, having formed around 40,000 years ago. Before its infamous eruption, the volcano stood at nearly 10,000 feet tall, but the 1980 event removed the upper 1,300 feet of the volcano. Many years ago, the Earth began releasing massive quantities of basalt, andesite, and lava, which built up over time and constructed Mount St. Helens. The volcano was formed through the collision of an oceanic and continental plate. The oceanic plate, the Juan de Fuca plate, sank beneath the North American continental plate. Mount St. Helens also contains large amounts of dacitic, andesitic, and basaltic magma, which made for a very destructive eruption. Now, there's a bit of history behind the name of Mount St. Helens. It came from a member of the British Royal Navy, Captain George Vancouver, who named the volcano in honor of a friend whose formal title was Baron St. Helens. Although people live near Mount St. Helens, the nearest homes are around 15 miles away from the volcano. People live close to Mount St. Helens because the volcano provides fertile soil and geothermal energy. And also, the area itself is very beautiful even after the destruction caused by the 1980 eruption. 37 years later, much of the land has been restored by nature. Alright, so now let's talk about the eruption. In March of 1980, the volcano experienced a 4.2 magnitude earthquake, and concerns worsened in April when the side of the volcano started to bulge outwards. On May 18, 1980, at 8.32 in the morning, a 5.1 magnitude earthquake caused the eruption of Mount St. Helens. A massive avalanche of debris, the largest to have occurred in recent times, shot out from the side of the volcano. This avalanche was in essence a giant pyroclastic flow which traveled a great distance and caused unbelievable devastation. 57 people died as a result of the eruption, including several scientists and geologists working near the volcano on May 18th. Shortly after the eruption from the side of the volcano, a plume of volcanic ash shot out of Mount St. Helens, 12 miles into the sky. The ash cloud traveled as far as 300 miles away, where it darkened the sky and caused streetlights to turn on in some areas. As a result of the eruption, ice, snow, and water from Mount St. Helens mixed together to create lahar mudflows, which became a major factor in the destruction caused by the volcano. In this picture you can see a bunch of trees that were taken down by a mudflow, as well as the outline of the mudflow on the trees in the background, and that shows you just how high the mudflow was. Mount St. Helens also had a tremendous economic impact. Over 200 houses in the surrounding area were destroyed while nearly 200 roads were badly damaged. Air traffic in the northwestern United States was also temporarily shut down due to the ash released by the volcano. Many people don't know that Mount St. Helens actually created a mega tsunami, one that was similar to the mechanism of the 1958 Latoya Bay mega tsunami, which was caused by a massive landslide that plunged into the bay and produced a huge wave. The pyroclastic debris released by Mount St. Helens would travel to Spirit Lake, where a mega tsunami was created. Waves reaching several hundred feet in height caused more destruction in the area after the eruption itself. Thirty years later, many of these trees still remain floating in the lakes near Mount St. Helens. Ever since the 1980 eruption, Mount St. Helens summit has been slowly growing. From 2004 to 2008, the volcano experienced moderate activity when lava started pouring out and creating a new lava dome. Plumes of steam were released periodically, most notably in 2005, when a large plume of steam and ash was released several miles into the atmosphere. People have long speculated when or if Mount St. Helens will erupt again. Slowly the volcano is reconstructing its summit, and it is confirmed to be active. It would be unwise to live very close to the volcano as lahars and pyroclastic flows could very well occur. Nearby cities would certainly be affected considering that the ashfall of the 1980 eruption settled down in multiple states. People can reduce the risk of an eruption by not living too close to the volcano. Nevertheless, know that while it is impossible to stop a volcano from erupting, it is not impossible to prepare for it. Geologists in the region are closely monitoring the volcano's status in the event of a future eruption. The 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens was the most destructive volcanic eruption in the United States. Mount St. Helens has a very interesting history, and its eruption resulted in great devastation that came with tremendous economic impacts. While researching Mount St. Helens, I found out that the eruption created a mega-tsunami in Spirit Lake. 
I had no idea about this before researching the volcano, but given the size of the eruption, it certainly makes sense to me that there was a tsunami or a mega tsunami in the surrounding lakes. I also found out that the eruption itself was caused by an earthquake. Before doing the research, I thought the eruption occurred on its own and was simply bound to happen any day. And in a way it was, as pressure was building up within the volcano, and the earthquake ultimately caused the eruption. So there's some backstory on Mount St. Helens, a very interesting volcano that's had a very destructive eruptive history. It has helped a lot of people to understand more about volcanoes, and it remains one of the most infamous volcanic eruptions in history. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.